Test. Test, test, one, two, three. Are you ready? Are you ready for your YouTube debut? Hey guys, it is Josie and Phoebe. This is her official YouTube debut. So today I really wanted to do a video telling you guys what all we got for our puppy, what we did in order to prepare our apartment for our puppy because living in an apartment is definitely tricky with a new puppy. Not impossible by any means, but there's definitely things you gotta do. If any of you guys are considering getting a puppy, this is just kind of my little quick guide as to how I would prepare what I bought that I really loved and we've used and what I bought that honestly we could have done without, especially for the first couple of weeks. Oh my gosh, her little puppy dog eyes, you guys. Look at how cute she is. Say hi. Say hi, Phoebe. Say hi, baby. She's like, what am I looking at, mom? <laughs> without further ado, let's get into it. So I'm gonna start off with the things that I really can't show you on camera. Number one is a kennel. I actually just bought it used but cleaned. There were no accidents and she said that her puppy just outgrew it within a couple months. So we got a kennel and I think that's super important. It's really important to try to kennel train pretty early on. So what we did is we kennel her for the first couple of hours of the night. So when we're going to bed, we put her in her kennel, we put her to bed as well. It's been going really well. She'll whine a little bit, but we'll put on a show that we want to watch too and we all fall asleep and it's all good. And then probably like four to five hours into that, um, she will start whining. And so we'll take her out to potty and then we'll let her lay with us for a little bit. Oh, what baby? Okay, I'm gonna set her down just because she's getting a little antsy. Anyways, kennel, definitely number one. Number two, we got her a bed. I got her a bed at Home Good, And I will say she has not slept in the bed once but that's okay. So honestly, if you're looking to save a little bit of money at the beginning, I don't think a dog bed is a necessity. As long as you have a kennel and you're willing for her to be on the couch or you're willing for her to be in your bed with you. Like she's hypoallergenic. She doesn't shed very much. And so we were totally fine with that. Another bigger thing that we got that I really recommend living in an apartment. I would say that this is quite nice and Zach works from home so he's home all day but he's not necessarily able to have his eye on her 24 7 if that makes sense and so we ended up getting her a playpen and we got the smallest size it's quite big the nice thing about it is it can be used indoor and outdoor so he's able to use it when he is working on a video and just set it up right next to him and so she's right there. She's not getting into any other rooms or anything that she shouldn't be. She still has room to play and kind of wander and stuff. So that one is super duper useful. And then outdoor too, since we live in an apartment, luckily we are ground level. We have a walkway out into a grassy area, which is super duper helpful. But if we want her to have room outside to kind of run and play, it's a really nice thing just to either set up completely in like an octagon. All right, she's back. <laughs> but it is super nice. You can even set it up to cut off one room for them. You can just set it up in between doorways. It's kind of an investment, but I think it's worth what you're gonna pay for it. The next thing I bought that I'm not going to show you guys in the video just because it has her food and water in it currently is a slow feeder water bowl duo. The nice thing about that, especially with puppies, is they tend to eat really quickly um, and that can cause intestinal problems as well as just like they might just puke it all up and then there goes, you know, all of that. They don't soak any of the nutrients in. It's super easy to clean and it also comes with a built-in water bowl, which is super duper nice. And she does really well. We haven't had an issue of her, you know, eating too quickly because we can just put out her full serving of food throughout the day. And because it's a slow feeder, she doesn't just engulf the entire serving all at once. She's really good about, you know, kind of eating on it for a while until she's stuffed or kind of gets bored. If she's hungry, she'll just go right back to it. And we haven't really had an issue. And when we take her out in the morning for the first time, when we wake up, we also get her food out. And so she can just graze throughout the day. And we absolutely love it. It's been great. The last thing that we got that I'm just not gonna show because it's not worth it is poop bags, obviously. She still is super good about knowing when and where to poop. She's already super smart, super responsible, but I have to chalk that up mostly to the breeder. Food. Food was something that I really did a lot of research on. So what the breeder did is she actually gave us a little bag of her puppy food that she had been eating already. So from when she came to us, she had been eating this Nutrisource 
um, premium pet food, small and medium breed puppy food. It was nice getting some of that food because we could continue to feed her that food for a while as we're slowly weaning her onto the puppy food that we are going to use. But the puppy food we did get for her for when she is old enough is this blue puppy formula food. I just kept coming back to this. I know that it is kind of expensive, but because she doesn't eat a whole lot, I'm not too worried. I would rather pay a little bit more for a really good puppy food. That's just my personal opinion. If you're looking to save money, you obviously can. There are so many puppy and dog foods out there. As far as like other foods and treats go, we kind of got lucky with her because her favorite treat and toy really are these greenies dental treats and she likes the blueberry flavor which I'm happy about because I like that it smells a little bit nicer when she eats them as well she just whined because she saw them and she wants one but I will say out of all the things that we got that's been the most helpful useful thing she'll play with it as if it's like a little toy she'll eat it we really like those she really likes those which is good and they're good for their teeth so i'm kind of happy that her favorite treat is one that also helps with her dental hygiene the other treat that her aunt hannah actually got her that she loves are these dental sticks they're the gate get naked Simple and Honest Pet Treat Puppy Health Supports Healthy Brain Development Treats for Dogs. Um, so these ones are grain-free dental sticks. She is obsessed with sticks, like real sticks from trees and branches and things like that. And I think those kind of resemble them. And so she really, really likes them. Another thing as far as food goes that has been really nice is these little Ziploc containers. There is actually food in it right now or on the go. So it's also really good for when you're training. I did talk to a lot of people as far as like training treats for when you're like teaching her her name or teaching her how to sit and come and things like that. A lot of people actually said just use their food and give them a little niblet every time they do it right as if it is a treat because if you train them to get super duper excited about their treat it's really early on that's all they're gonna look forward to so I definitely recommend those another thing as far as treats and food goes we did get her two Kong treats and then we did get her the puppy recipe little fill thing I actually think this came from her aunt Hannah as well <laughs> not too bad I'm sure it's not the healthiest thing but we also don't use this very often we'll put a little Kong in there with her and have you know throw a little squirt of that in it and so it's almost like a game for her to keep her occupied while we go run an errand or something like that we did get her a collar but the thing about the collar is because she's so small the collar actually doesn't fit her yet and this is the extra extra small version we actually didn't need a collar at the beginning she actually doesn't wear one right now um if we take her out we put it on her so that we can put a leash on her but like I said, it doesn't fit super well, so we end up holding her a lot anyways. If your puppy's gonna be super duper small, it might just be something that you wait to get and maybe go to a PetSmart or something like that and get one that fits her or him. But we also got a leash, just one of those nylon black leashes. I just got the extra small kind, um, just black with a metal clasp. It's also Frisco, just, it's just a basic leash. So you can really get any leash. Alrighty, sorry guys. So the camera definitely just cut out. <laughs> potty bells. Now you don't have to buy like the nice ones that say potty bells on them and are sold on Chewy.com. Um, you can make your own and just get a bell on a string and hang it from your doorway. The nice thing about these was well, they were on sale when I was shopping on Chewy.com and they came in a pack of two that looked the exact same. They are adjustable, so they have these little clips that you can adjust to your door handle size and length. We just kind of ring it every time we take her out and the hope is that once she kind of learns that noise correlation, that when she has to go potty, she'll just ring the bell herself because she'll know if she rings the bell, that means she's gonna go potty. To go along with puppy training and potty training, I did get this Nature's Miracle No More Marking Stain and Odor Remover with the Repellent that is safe for pets and home. Every single puppy that my family had, my dad would just use spot shot on any accident or if they puked or whatever it might be. And I feel like that probably was not safe for dogs. They don't market that it's safe for dogs. So I have a hard time believing that it is. But this one's super nice. It works wonders. I remember her first day, she did puke a little bit. I sprayed a little bit of this on it and it was gone within a couple hours. I just sprayed a little bit patted it with the towel, kind of left it there, and then came back and really wiped it up and cleaned it up and it was gone. So I recommend this one. 
As far as hygiene goes, we did get her puppy friendly toothpaste and a little tiny toothbrush. We had heard from a couple people with a lot of dogs that if you want them to not be scared of being in the car, if you don't want them to be scared of taking a bath, if you don't want them to be scared of getting their teeth brushed, things like that, you really want to implement that as early on as possible um, because then they're just kind of used to it. So the first week we had her, we brushed her teeth. What I did is I just put a little bit of the toothpaste on it, let her lick it so she was used to the taste, wasn't scared of it. And then I took a little bit more on my finger, kind of rubbed it all over her gums and on her little puppy teeth, and then used the brush very lightly, just kind of on her front teeth mostly, just so she was used to the sensation. Question though, I did a little bit of research on, I think it was like Tropic Clear that has like a water additive. I don't know if it's preventative or if it's supposed to help repair bad breath in dogs. But have any of you guys used that? If so, comment below. As far as bathing, we have bathed her once. She did not like it at all, <laughs> but hopefully she'll start to like it more. For her shampoo, I just got this Burt's Bees Oatmeal Shampoo. Anytime I was looking up shampoo, this one popped up. I don't know if it's great for poodles. I honestly didn't do a whole lot of research. I wasn't super worried about it. I know my dad growing up would just use like soft soap on all of our dogs and their fur is just fine. And it's 99.7% natural. So hey, if I can save you guys any money or give you any piece of advice on what not to go overboard with, I would definitely say don't buy a ton of toys, especially not at the beginning. Maybe buy one of each kind of toy, like buy a chew toy, buy a bone, buy a plush toy, things like that. I bought this little sloth for her and she likes it, but she plays with it for like three seconds and then kind of moves on. If they eat that and they're ingesting a lot of it, it can be really damaging for them, especially as puppies, they're not, they just don't know yet. And if you're giving them chew toys and plush toys and you know, all these different types of toys, they don't, they're not good at differentiating, okay, which one do I swallow and which one do I not? One plush toy, I got her a bunch of tennis balls. I got her two brands, I got like just the Kong brand and then I got these like hyper pet ones and they're both like puppy size. I think the Kong, yeah, the Kong ones squeak, these ones do not, these ones are hard but she doesn't really play with any of them. I want her to play fetch, but she doesn't really have an interest in it. Her favorite toy right now, you guys, are sticks that she gets outside from the branches on the tree. She loves sticks and she will bring them in and like present them to me and Zach. She's so proud of her little tiny sticks. She loves them and it's super adorable. And if that's her choice of toy, I'm gonna let her play with sticks because cool, cheap for me, it's free. It's from nature, I love it. <laughs> I got a lot of Kong toys just because I know that the brand is super good. They're pretty durable. This one is just like one of those ropes and I remember buying it and it came in the mail and I was like, this thing is huge. She is literally going to be so tiny. She won't be able to hold this in her mouth, but she actually kind of likes it. She almost just chases it around. She has played with this, but like I said, most of her toys she, you know, plays with for three seconds and then she moves on. As of now, you guys, and when you're first getting a puppy, just kind of figure it out with them slowly because you don't want to spend all this money on things that you're going to have no use for. So I recommend just kind of feeling it out. I know I already touched on these, but I did have them. These are just like the little puppy Kongs. There is some of that little like puppy recipe filling in it. So um, these are super nice and she does really like these. I think the thing about these is it's more of like a puzzle for her because she's trying to like get into that middle to lick up the treat. We really like the Kong toys and she really likes the Kong toys. So I definitely recommend those. But like I said, do not overspend on toys. A couple of tips I have just in general for preparing an apartment for puppies. One, make sure you puppy proof your apartment kind of room by room, picking everything up off the floor. I know one of my big things was I had a shoe rack that was in our bedroom where it wasn't enclosed in any way. And I had to kind of rearrange my closet so I could put that on the bottom of my closet where there were doors. Just picking up cords, picking up like, we had bottle caps in places that Normally it wouldn't be an inconvenience to us, but a puppy will find that and chew on it. It could break their teeth, it could really hurt them. So things like that. And you want to make sure that anything in reach is going to be safe for them and you will not be upset if it's ruined in a week. Tip number two, if you're a plant lover and owner like me, you have to go through your plants and see if they're safe for your puppies. 
Unfortunately, I have about 15 to 20 plants and one of them was non-toxic and non-poisonous to dogs. That was a lot of plants that I had to lift off the ground, that I had to put in places that if a leaf fell, she couldn't eat it. Um, I donated a couple of them to family and friends because I just had so many that didn't have homes anymore. And I think for a lot of people, plants are like decorative, but they are living, they can be harmful. You want everything to coexist and be okay. And then tip number three is before we even got her into our apartment, we designated a spot for her to sleep. We designated a spot that was going to be her play area. And we designated a spot for her to go potty. Luckily, we're on the bottom floor, so we do have a walk out into grassy area, and she did come to a semi-potty train, so we were pretty lucky with that. We wanted our living room, we have a, a nice little big open area in our living room that we really wanted to designate as our play area. So we put our playpen the first couple of days right in that area, so she got used to being there with all of her toys around her, and that was super helpful, I think, for us and for her, because nobody is confused about where this puppy should be playing. You want her to feel comfortable to take a nap on the couch, sure, but you want her to know that once we come into the bedroom and we're kind of winding down and the lights are getting turned off and things like that, this is your time to rest. Her kennel is right next to our bed just in case and it's been working really well for us. So designating those areas is really important, especially, especially in an apartment. In an apartment, there's not as much room. It's really sectioned off and Zach works from home. So he has a lot of equipment and things like that that needs to stay untouched. And so designating those areas was very important to us and very detrimental in making sure that everybody was happy. <laughs> Those are my three main tips. If you guys enjoyed this video, if you'd like to see more, if you want updates on the puppy or puppy vlogs, please let us know. We are super excited. We love our puppy a lot. We're very excited to have started our beautiful little family. Like I said, we're still in an apartment, so we did get a small breed. She's only supposed to be 10 to 15 pounds, but that's perfect for us. Phoebe is back. She wanted to say goodbye to everybody. Please comment below if you would like to see more of that. And we will be talking to you guys very soon. Say bye. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Say love you. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you, baby.